It's a great pleasure to have Professor Emmanuel give our next talk in the morning, and he'll be talking on Sharifi's conjectures and generalizations. So over to you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to speak, and I wish I can visit ICTS in the next near future, so because I don't live very far from it. Um, so I want to talk about some conjectures of Sharifi, um, uh, which I'm very excited about, and, and, and some generalizations. Um, so most of this uh, is, uh, twin, uh, is joint work with Twin Wong uh, from Morningside Center. Um, so um, let me briefly recall uh, uh, the philosophy of, of Sharpe's conjecture. So his philosophy is that there should be a, you know, a relation between the geometry of GL2, GL2 over Q modulo Stein and the arithmetic of GL1 over Q. Um, and um, that's something which uh, I, I've been, ex well, I should go that, yeah. Uh, I, I've been explored uh, in the past, of course, by Ribet, for instance, uh, when he produced Stein congruences um, to, I mean, he uses, uh, used uh, Stein congruences to produce um, uh, some some classes in the class group of the cyclotomic field, um, and this was taken further by Major Wise on, uh, on the work for the it was our main conjecture. So uh, this is in the same spirit, uh, but uh, the difference with uh, sorry I cannot the difference with Sharif's conjecture is that uh, this is what Sharif does is, is completely explicit. Um, so. Um, so today we are going to review uh, these conjectures and, and, and survey what is known about them and, and, and see what can be done in the setting of Bianchi threefold. Um, so, um, so let me start with a few notations. So we, we are going to invert to everywhere. So our, our coefficients would be z prime equals z bracket one over two. Um, we would fix some positive integer n and let x1 of n be the usual modular curve of level gamma 1 n. And zeta n would be a primitive nth root of unity. Um, so then uh, we're going to consider a certain subset of the cusps of x1 n, which I denote by c1 n. So these are not all the cusps, but only the cusps which are not above the infinity cusp of x zero n, right? Because you have a covering from x one n to x zero n, and 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 you you just consider the cusps which are not above infinity. Um, so you can consider the singular homology of of x one of n uh, relative to these cusps. Um, and uh, so you, you can think of it uh, as um, homology classes of, of paths in the, on the modular curve whose uh, boundary are in, uh, in this cusp, C1n. Uh, and um, so, yeah, we take Z prime coefficients, as I said. And um, it turns out there is a natural action of some complex conjugation on this group. Uh, so you, we want to take the plus part for some reason. So we will always consider plus parts. Mm. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's the homology. Then there is another object we want to consider, uh, namely the K2 group of, of Z, zeta, and one over N. Uh, so K2 here is in the sense of quillen. Um, so this is the arithmetic object we are interested in. And so what Sharifi did is that he, he constructed an explicit map between the homology of the modular curve to this K2. And we take the plus part on both sides. So that's very important to consider only plus part. Um, and um, so the, the point, if you want to make, make this map explicit, you need generators uh, for this homology group. Um, and relations also. Um, so this is what we're going to recall. Right, uh, so Manin did that a long time ago. So um, 
more generally, the H the, the H one of the modular curve relative to all the cusps is first of all it is easily seen that it is generated by the geodesic path between uh, alpha beta where alpha and beta are in Q1 Q. So we, we denote that by bracket alpha beta. But of course you have infinitely many generators like that uh, and infinitely many relations. So it's not good if you want to, to have something uh, well computable. Um, so uh, Manin uh, used continued fractions uh, to, to show, in fact, that uh, you only need to take the generators uh, of the form G0, G infinity, where G is in SL to Z, um, right? So it really uses the fact that Z is a Euclidean ring. Um, and this is going to be important later when we, when we go to the Bianchi case, because we, if, if the imaginary quadratic field is, is Euclidean, it will be much easier. Um, uh, of course, uh, if you change G by, uh, by some element in gamma 1n, it doesn't change the modular symbol because you work in x1n. So actually, uh, your, so your generators are indexed by this set, gamma 1n mod SL2z. Wait, I should say PSL2z, in fact, but anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, there's an identification uh, so of gamma 1n mod SL2z with this uh, bracket uv, where v are an element in z mod nz, with gcd with n is 1. Well, also, OK, so I should say PSL2z and maybe modeled by a plus or minus 1. So it should, yeah, it should be up to sign this bracket. OK. And the identification is just uh, as follows. You send a matrix in SL2z to its lower row. row. And you can check it that it does not depend on, I mean, if you modify this matrix by gamma one N on the left, you don't change U and V mod N. Um, so uh, that's the generators and, and Manin also gave the relations, uh, the well-known relations. So there are two kinds of, of relations. The first one is the two terms relation. And the, the second one is the third term relations. Um, so the first one corresponds to basically changing the orientation from the path to zero to infinity on the upper half plane. And the second one corresponds to some boundary of, of some triangle. Um, yeah, so that's the relation. Um, and, and so, okay, so we know now uh, that um, this relative homology group X1N relative to all the cusps is generated by these symbols but we are only interested in a subset of that, a subset of curves, right? C1M. And it turns out you, uh, to generate this homology group, you only need to consider um, the UV uh, where U and V are non-zero modulo N, both non-zero modulo N. So that's a, that's a subset of Manin symbols. And you take the co corresponding subset of Manin relations and, and you get a presentation. Um, Oh yes, and also uh, the complex conjugation acts on main symbols by UV sends to minus UV. So if, if you work in the plus part, you have UV equals minus UV equals U minus V because uh, yeah, everything is up to sign. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, that's, that's it for main symbols. And so the map that Sharif, is, Sharif considered uh, we will denote it by var pi uh, m, um, right? We keep the, the index, uh, the level in index. So it's a map from the uh, relative homology to the K2, which sends this Manin symbols UV to this uh, Steinberg product of, of these two cyclotomic n units, um, y minus the ten to the power u and one minus the ten to the power v. And because u and v are both non-zero, uh, these terms here are non-zero, so it's well defined. So for those who are not very familiar with K theory, so what you need to know about this Steinberg symbols or, or Steinberg product here is that it is a bilinear pairing between the units of this ring, and it satisfies the so-called Steinberg relations, uh, namely x 
uh, one minus x equals zero when x is a, is a unit in z detain one over n and one minus x is also a unit in z detain one over n. So the, the, the point is it's, it's okay, if you take a random unit, uh, one minus x will not be a unit in general. So that's why it's interesting from the arithmetic point of view uh, to get such relations. Um, and it's hard to find in general. Um, but uh, it turns out that, um, so to check that var n is well-defined, you need to, you know, to, to show it kills the Manin relations we have seen before. Um, and while it's not so hard, you have to exhibit some, you know, uh, some, some solutions to the equation x plus y equals one, where x and y are cyclotomic units. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's fun to, to do the exercise and, and then you, you can show it's well-defined. Uh, let me just say that uh, it's absolutely important and necessary to take the plus part if you want to get something well-defined. Otherwise you have some problems. Um, and to invert two also, it's, it's necessary to invert two. So uh, of course you want VAPA n to be some isomorphism. So uh, the, the right hand side, is, it's a K2 of some S integer ring. So it's known to be finite. It's a finite abelian group. Uh, on the other hand, on the left hand side is of course a free group, a free Z module of finite trunk. So it's not finite. Um, so you need to mod out by something. And this something is some as a Stein ideal. Um, so, okay, let me recall what this is. So, so we are going to work not with the usual hack operators, but with the dual one, uh, dual ones. Um, I will, uh, so, so I will denote them by TL star, diamond L star, where N L is a prime not dividing N, and also UL star, where L is a prime dividing N. So why do we take dual hack operators? Well, it's because it turns out um, the usual hack operators do not preserve the relative homology group with respect to the non-infinity cusp. So if you want to, to have some action, you need to take the dual hack operators. But if you restrict to the absolute homology of X1N, then you don't have this problem and you, you, could, you could take the usual hack operators. Um, so, yeah. Um, and so the Esselstein ideal we want to consider is generated by these operators, TL star minus Y minus L diamond L. That's the first one. And the second one is UL star minus one. So the first one is kind of natural because uh, this one plus L diamond L is, 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 the, is the L Fourier coefficient of the equivariant Esselstein, some equivariant Esselstein series. Um, uh, but UL star minus one is less clear. Um, actually, it's kind of a mystery why it should be this, but uh, it turns out this has to be that. Um, so I don't fully understand it at the moment. Um, so here is the conjecture. It was made by Sharifi around 2010. And the conjecture says that var pi n is, is annihilated by this as a Stein ideal I am. And uh, so, that, so that's the first part of the conjecture, which I would call the Eisenstein quotient conjecture. And the second part is the isomorphism conjecture, uh, namely var pi n, if you restrict it to the absolute homology, um, then it becomes an isomorphism after mod out the Eisenstein, modding out the Eisenstein ideal. Uh, Right. Um, so, I mean, both sides here are finite groups, right? It's, it's easy to see that the left-hand side is, is, is a finite group. Um, um, and they also have, they both have an action of Z mod N Z star. So here on the left-hand side, it's the diamond action. And on the right-hand side, it's the Galois action. And uh, this map is compatible, except you, I mean, it sends an element of the, and then starts with inverse. It's so it's anti-equivariant -equiv for this action. Um, because we have, we have chosen dual 
diamond operators. Uh, if we if we choose uh, usual diamond operators, it's it's just it's really equivalent, literally. Um, let me say that it's necessary, definitely, to to reduce to the absolute homology to get an, uh, to expect an isomorphism. So, uh, so it means we know there are some contraexamples uh, if we don't restrict to absolute homology. Um, so the map may have some kernel um, or, or not being surjective. But uh, the, the contraexamples are not so easy to, to find. For instance, in prime level, there are no, no contraexamples, but you have to have at least two or three primes in the level, if I remember. So Sharifi told me that yeah, he found some, some contraexamples. Um, okay, what do I want to say? Okay, that's, that's what I wanted to say about that's the conjecture. Uh, yes, uh, let me mention the relation with uh, the classical was our main conjecture. Uh, I mean, the simplest case where n is a prime power of p, p is, is, is not two. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, so first of all, this k2 of, of this cyclotomic ring, modulo p to the n, it's uh, canonically isomorphic to the class group of, of, of z zeta p to the n, modulo p to the n. Uh, so well, you take the plus part on the left-hand side, the minus part on the right-hand side, and you have to twist uh, by a, a tight twist. Um, and this is an isomorphism of Galois modules. Um, so, uh, right, and notice the change in the signs. Um, so it's it's uh, so it means uh, the K two we are interested interested in in fact is is some more classical objects that just the class group the minus part of the class group, which is the thing we care about in Iwasawa theory, um, and so now you can you can take uh, you can take um, the inverse limit of of the Sharifi map when n goes to infinity so you climb up uh, the, 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 the periodic tower. Uh, on the modular curve side and on the class group side, and you get a map from this inverse limit, modulo Eisenstein to x minus twisted by one, where x is uh, the inverse limit of the class groups. So that's a classical Iwasawa module, unramified classical. Um, and so, um, so this is the object we, we, we want to, to, to understand in Iwasawa, uh, using the Iwasawa main conjecture, right? <clears throat> the Iwasawa main conjecture tells you the, the characteristic ideal of this guy, the right hand side, is uh, basically the periodical function, well, twisted by, by one, um, but uh, well, because we didn't specify a, 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 a power of the Teschmuller character, uh, it's 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 really the equivalent uh, periodical function. Uh, anyway, we could just fix some power of Teschmuller. Um, it's not important. So uh, okay, so that's for the right hand side and the left hand side. It turns out it's possible um, to prove all, that all the, the characteristic ideals is also this equivalent periodical function. So if Sharif's conjecture is true, then it, it, it in particular implies the Iwasawa main conjecture. So that's why in some sense, the conjecture of Sharifi is, is a refinement of the EMC um, because it gives you an explicit canonical module uh, with the right characteristic ideals, which is yeah, isomorphic to, to this Iwasawa module. Okay. Um, but it turns out, yeah, I think in, in the proof of, of, I believe in the, in what we know about Sharif's conjecture by Fukuya Kato, uh, the, in fact, they use, uh, I believe it was our main conjecture. So, yeah. Um, okay, let, let me survey um, some known results. So many people worked on this conjecture and uh, including of course, Sharifi, then uh, Glenn Stevens, Celia Bozioc, um, Preston Way, Carl Wang Erickson, Ota, Fukaya, Kato, myself, Chun Wong, and probably many others, which I apologize if I missed. 
And uh, I want to mention a recent breakthrough by uh, Sharifi and Venkatesh. Uh, I think they put uh, the preprint uh, something like one month ago. Um, um, so today we just survey uh, the work of Pukai Kato, uh, my work with Wong, and, and the work of Sharifi Venkatesh. Um, so let's start with uh, Fuke Akato. So um, uh, Fuke Akato, um, yeah, their work uh, was done in, their preprint dates from 2012 and it's still unpublished, which is kind of a problem, but anyway. Um, so they, they proved the Eisenstein quotient conjecture, but they, they do it only with coefficients in ZP. They have to localize at P uh, where P is a prime, first of all, it's bigger or equal to five, and more seriously, it, it divides N, the level. Um, so, you know, the, the Sharfi original conjecture doesn't have any P, uh, it's something integral. Uh, but they have that because their method is, is really P adic. So, roughly speaking, the strategy is as follows. So in fact, they, they define some auxiliary map, which they call ZM, a zeta map, which goes from the homology of X1M and, and, and to the K2 of the modular curve, right? You can define the K2 of any scheme, but here, I mean, that's an affine scheme, so that's just the K2 of a ring um, over Z1 over N. Uh, everything with coefficients in ZP. And so this map sends the Mannion symbols UV to some Steinberg product of Z gold units, um, G0 U over M, G0 V over M, right? So, so first of all, they, they define this map. Uh, it's very hard, you know, it's okay. First of all, it's hard to prove it's well-defined, right? You have to prove Mannion relations and it's even harder to prove it's Hecker equivalence. That's a really hard thing. Um, but once you assume that, then you just somehow uh, specialize at infinity and you get var by n, the Sharifi map. So yeah, okay, uh, G0u over n is a usual single unit. So it's a unit in y1n, but it has some denominator, namely 12m. So you have to invert 6m. And so its leading term is, uh, is one minus the tan to the power u at infinity. So that's why if you somehow specialize it, you, you get this cyclotomic unit. Um, so of course it's not literally specializing because uh, it's not, I mean, this, this, this uh, it's not well-defined. Infinity does not belong to Y1N. So you cannot specialize literally, but uh, uh, Fuke Akato found a way to do so somehow. Um, and uh, okay, so to study this map Zeta N, uh, they need to do uh, to go to the periodic tower, and, and then they have to take ordinary paths and and, and apply some dual exponential map. Um, so uh, it's it's pretty fancy, uh, and, and in the end, yeah, there, there are, yeah, they prove that it's hacker covariant and well defined. Um, yeah. Um, okay, in general, with coefficient, they have to transfer of QP, in fact, not ZP, uh, to, sh to show that. Uh, but in some cases, I think if P does not divide phi of M, um, then they can show it's integral. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's their strategy. Uh, let me mention that, uh, so that's about the SH10 quotient conjecture, but they also prove major results toward uh, the isomorphism part. So they, they, they prove under some assumptions that uh, Sharfi's map is an isomorphism. Um, but I'm not going to talk about this part. Uh, okay, so now let me <clears throat> talk about my uh, work with uh, Jun Wang. So we are interested in a different situation as Fuke Akato, uh, namely we we were interested in the, in the case where the level is, is, is a prime <clears throat> and P is another prime dividing N minus one. So for those who are familiar with Mazur's work, it corresponds to, yeah, it corresponds to the setting of Mazur's Eisenstein ideal. And um, 
So what we prove, we, we, we almost prove the SH time quotient conjecture with coefficient in ZP, right? Uh, again, we, we cannot do it integrally. We have to transfer with ZP. Um, but so uh, what do we mean by almost? Uh, so we prove uh, the map is SH time after you modeled by this K2 by, us, by this term, K2 of Z1 over M, tons of ZP. Um, and so it's not such a big deal because, uh, I mean, this term is not zero definitely, but it's, it's quite small, right? It's just Z mod NZ star tensor ZP. We can prove that. Um, but it's a non-zero term. So that's something we cannot get rid of uh, using, uh, I mean, you, our technique follows the ideas of Fukuyakato and using these ideas, I think that's the best you can do. Um, and the reason why you have this annoying term uh, is that um, it, it, it belongs to the kernel of some periodic regulator. So you cannot get rid of. Uh, while in, in the situation of Fukuyakato, they didn't have this in the kernel, it, it vanishes. Um, so I, I have a question, if I may ask. Yeah. This, the, I'm trying to understand them more precisely. This is Ignat, by the way. Um, I'm trying to understand. Um, does this mean that uh, omega n takes the Eisenstein ideal to the denominator of that quotient? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or in other words, if you model by that, uh, yeah. it, it, it is indeed killed by SH time. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, so that's 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 one part of our work. But in fact, in fact, our main motivation was to study Mazur's Stein ideal. So um, Mazur's Stein ideal is something at level gamma zero n, not gamma one n. But uh, if you carefully analyze how things go when you pass from level gamma one to level gamma zero, um, uh, you, I mean, if you do that, then you, you, you can show that uh, 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 Sharfi's conjecture gives a description of this, of this quotient. So I here is, is Mazur's Stein ideal. Uh, is that, I mean, that's a unique SH Stein ideal at this level. So I times the homology mod I squared times the homology, we take plus part. Um, and we give an explicit description uh, using Sharif's conjecture. Uh, but because our result is not quite complete, right? We have this, this non-zero term, we can only give the description um, under some assumption. And let me tell you the assumption we have. Uh, the assumption is that this integer here, product from k equals one to n minus one over two of k to the power k, uh, it's zero in z mod n z star tens, tensor zp. Um, and yeah, this, this quantity has a lot of meaning. It was, uh, I think, first discovered by Loic Merel uh, in his work on S. Stein cycles uh, on the modular curve. And yes, so that's the condition we have. Okay. Uh, so that's about our work. And now the, the recent work of, of Sharifi Vengetesh. So it's a major breakthrough because they can prove basically everything, not, but not quite. So they, they prove that the restriction of, of the VARPIN map to the absolute homology with integral coefficient is as a Stein, except they don't get to the this operators UL star minus one, right? Remember you had this TL minus one minus L diamond L and also this one when L divides N and they cannot get these ones. Um, it seems pretty hard, uh, in fact, to, to get these ones from their method. Um, 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 yeah, so also, yeah, uh, so, so I said that they have to restrict to absolute homology, but after looking at the paper, I, I believe it's not hard to to in fact uh, get everything for the uh, relative homology. Uh, but I, we have to check the details, but it shouldn't be that hard. Um, uh, so, so there is a, a very important difference with the work of Fukuyakato, uh, namely they don't 
make use of Ziegler units to prove these results. They only stay at the level of cyclotomic units. And um, the reason is that they, they, they use the multiple I mean, they use the multiple cohomology of the square of the torus. Um, so there's uh, what they call a multiple complex, which, uh, which corresponds to K2 of GM squared, K1 of GM squared, K0 of GM squared. And this complex computes the multiple cohomology of GM squared. And because this multiple cohomology is, is quite easy to compute, uh, yeah, this complex is basically almost exact. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to answer the details of their work, but um, yeah, they, they don't make use of, 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 of Seagull units. But independently, they also get results about Seagull units, although they don't use these results for cyclotomic unit, but they also study this map zeta, Z, Zn. Um, and basically they prove everything. I mean, they prove it's well-defined in Hecker equivariant. Um, except again, they cannot treat the case of the heck operators UL star. So it's away from the level. And, um, and I think they also have to restrict to absolute homology. But other from that, it's, it's uh, yeah, they recover everything. Um, and their method is, to, is, is analogous to the case of cyclotomic units, uh, namely they replace GM squared by E squared where E is the universal elliptic curve over Y1 of N. But here it's much com more complicated because the motivic cohomology of this square of elliptic curve is, is really non-trivial, um, uh, but somehow they managed to, to kill it taking some kind of trace map. So, so yeah, um, that's a very nice result. Um, oh yeah, uh, did I want to say something more? Yeah, that's all for the work of Charity Venkatesh. Um, uh, by the way, yeah, Charity gave a talk about that, uh, I think in, in, in McGill, was maybe one or two months ago, and you can find his slides online and also the video. Um, uh, okay, so to, to conclude my talk, um, I want to talk about um, uh, another case where we can do something similar uh, namely the Bianchi case. So, um, so because we want to do something explicit in the end, uh, we, we need some kind of generators of the homology. And uh, so as far as I know, the only case we, we, we have that is the case of Bianchi threefold. Um, so, so let H, H3 be the upper half space, uh, which is the set of, of, of ZT where Z is in C, and R, and, uh, sorry, Z is in, in C and T is in is a positive real number, right? So we can view Z, uh, uh, you, you can view C as the floor and, and T as the vertical vertical direction um, and you get the upper half space. And, and there is an action by isometries of GL to C, which is not so nice to write down explicitly, but it is there. Um, and uh, to start with, uh, let me start with the imaginary quadratic field QI. Um, which obviously is Euclidean, um, and, and let's co somehow uh, compactify, a, I mean, let's take the extended upper arch plane H3 star, um, which is H3, and you, you add the P1 of K, uh, like, like we, we do for, for, for the upper half plane. Uh, and now uh, fix the rational integer, which is positive, and consider the Bianchi threefold uh, X1N, uh, oops, what happens? Yeah, x1 n uh, given by this quotient of, of, of the upper half space. So it's a compact threefold. And um, again, you, you have the non infinity curves, which are defined similarly. And you have Manin symbols, which are defined similarly, uh, except here u and v are in ok mod n ok instead of z mod nz. Um, and they are both non zero mod n. Okay, so, so everything is very similar. And even the relations are exactly the same um, uh, as in the case of the modular curve. But this is speci specific to QI, because if, if you take another imaginary quadratic field, uh, you will get more relations than the case of modular curves. But in this case, it is very nice. Uh, um, 
So, uh, well, uh, yeah. Well, you have to kill the units also. Like, like if you have a unit to U or a unit to V, this is the same as UV. That's that's an extra relation somehow. Um, so what's the analog of, of the map considered by Sharifi? Well, the analog of the cyclotomic field is, of course, a ray class field of K of conductor M. And, um, and the analog of the cyclotomic units is what we call elliptic units, right? Um, which are indexed by one over NZ modulo Z. So we, if alpha is something like that in one over NZ modulo Z, N is non-zero, we have some classical elliptic unit epsilon alpha, which I, I will not recall the definition. I mean, you can ask me after if you want. Um, and um, we prove with uh, Jun Wang that um, uh, the maps sending UV to this Cup, uh, this uh, cup product, this um, Steinberg product of, of elliptic units is indeed uh, well defined. So it, it satisfies the Manin relations. Uh, and so it's, it's not as easy as in the case of Sh Sharifi because you, you cannot write down, as far as I know, explicit Steinberg relations between elliptic units. Um, I mean, that because you, you know, it's not so explicit. It's, uh, so, yeah, there is something to prove here. Um, and uh, so we conjecture the map is Eisenstein. So the, the Eisenstein ideal we consider is this one. Uh, so it's indexed by irreducible elements uh, and it's T pi minus norm of pi minus diamond pi. Um, and we cannot go very far on this conjecture except we can just prove it for pi equals one plus I. Which is not, yeah, we can prove it by hand using uh, somehow a uh, work of Merel on um, the action of Heck operators and Manin symbols. I, I mean, the extension of that to Bianchi, the Bianchi case. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, yes, so that's uh, very weak. Uh, it's uh, what we can prove for, uh, using. Uh, naive method um, uh, and you could ask what about other fields so first of all the same works for q square root of minus three uh, and, and the, the reason why we can do things for qi and q square root of minus three is that they have extra units right and the fact that they have extra units uh, simplifies a lot the manning relations um, um, but if you take another imaginary quadratic field, uh, which is Euclidean, like QI square root of two, um, you do have many symbols, but the um, relations are more complicated. For instance, in this case, QI square root of two, you have two kinds of, I mean, you have a three, three terms many in relation, and also a four terms many in relation. And we can prove that the three terms many in relation is killed by our map, but we cannot prove it for the four terms of Manning relation. So that's even in the Euclidean case, we are stuck. Mm. Um, but in fact, uh, uh, our method is naive and what we should do is use the same ideas as Sharifi and Venkatesh. And we have not written it down yet, but we, we went through the paper and uh, I mean, discussing with Venkatesh and it seems that um, there shouldn't be any conceptual problem to extend, um, um, I mean, to prove uh, the Eisenstein quotient conjecture if K as class number one, um, right? So that's funny, right? Because if K is, is, is as class number one, but is not Euclidean, um, uh, many uh, generators are not enough to generate the homology. Um, you need other kinds of generators and these are something, I mean, by hand, you, yeah, I don't know how, how you prove the map is well-defined, even just well-defined. Um, but somehow with the abstract method of Sharifi Venkatesh, you don't care and, 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 and you can prove it directly. Um, and, okay, uh, sorry, did I, yeah, I, and okay, what, what do we use? So we use uh, the square of the elliptic curve, but it's not the universal elliptic curve anymore, it's the CM elliptic curve canonical CM elliptic curve attached to K. Um, so 
using this as a K2 of the square of this of some CM elliptic curve, um, you can get um, by specializing, you can get at some endorsement point, you can, you, you can get the, the, the well definedness and the Eschstein property of the map. Um, now, um, okay, the, you, we would like to do the arbitrary case where K has, uh, I mean, any K imaginary quadratic film. So, first of all, uh, there is no explicit presentation of the homology, um, as far as I know. I mean, there is a whole school around that, uh, namely the school of Scremona and his students, uh, but they, on, they could only de do a finite number of examples. And each time they have to do it by hand, computing fundamental domains. Uh, so yeah, it's not easy to, to compute the homology. So that makes things difficult. And secondly, heck operators are more complicated. Namely, they are indexed by prime ideals and uh, the Bianchi threefold is not connected anymore. It's, it, it's a disjoint union of copies uh, and uh, indexed by the class group of K. And so the hack operators in general permute the class or the components. Um, so the so action is much more complicated and, and we believe uh, with Van um, uh, there should be a way to to, to take care of these more complicated hack operators and and prove the, the well-definedness and the I mean and the steinness of, of the map. Although as I said, there is no explicit presentation of the homology, so you, you cannot characterize it explicitly in terms of manning symbols. Uh, but we have another way maybe to, to characterize it. Uh, but yeah, so that, that will be a, a future work. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, I'm in advance, but I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, are there any uh, questions, comments? Okay, so most obvious question is, what do you mean by the other way? Uh, so you said by the, there is no explicit representation of the homology, there must be other ways. So what is the other way? Is it something to derive Deke algebra of Venkatesh? Um, no, um, so that's something Meher suggested to me. Um, so basically, um, let's consider again the case of modular curves. So you have many generators, right? Um, but um, there, is a, there are other generators, namely twist of L functions. I mean, uh, I mean there are these cycles uh, for which if you integrate the cusp form, you get the twists of the L function. And if, if, you, if you take the twist by an, enough characters, you generate the homology. And so it does not depend on many symbols. And this approach uh, with twist of L functions um, should work um, in greater generality, even in the Bianchi case, for instance. Um, so my hope is that um, we will still find somehow, somehow explicit generators of, 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 of this. Of this um, for arbitrary k, but I don't think we'll get uh, explicit relations, only generators. Um, and then the thing is, you have to prove uh, an explicit formula. So what is the image of of this uh, twist twisting elements uh, under the, the map? And I have a conjecture for that, uh, which uh, which is uh, not very hard to write. Uh, and, and the point now would be to prove that, but it's another story. Oh, I don't have ideas for the moment. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in the Bianchi setting that you formulate, is there a implication of Iwasawa main conjecture like in Sharifi's classical case or? Uh, um, I have no idea, yeah. Um, uh, I have no idea because uh, it's not clear to me what what we know about the K two of some ray class field of imaginary. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's also not clear what we know about the Bianchi modular symbols mod Eisenstein. So mm -hmm. I have no idea. Really, no idea. Okay. <laughs> so um, I I have a question. It's actually uh, in about the um, work of Fukai and Kato. Uh, they uh, somehow uh, lift uh, the map to, to, to K2 
uh, to, uh, from the homology to K2 of the open modular curve. And then they specialize at the cusp somehow to get to K2 of the ring of integers of, of these that I n. Uh, but there's a Bailenson regular going the other way around from K2 of uh, the um, uh, open uh, modular curve to, to the link homology and so on. So what happens if you combine the two? Yeah, I guess you get basically, uh, so you, first of all, you start with many symbols, you go to K2, then you have some spectral sequence, right? From H1, H1, uh, H1, Z1 over N, H1, Y1, N. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you must apply some dual exponential map or something, and you get into modular forms, and then you, you apply some period map and you get again in the homology. So yeah. you, you the same thing on the homology to homology, and I guess it sends UV to UV times some zeta uh, zeta value. Yeah, I, it had been computed. Yeah, yeah, it has been computed. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah, they, yeah. They do that. Yeah. <laughs> I had more of a comment than a question. Yeah. Since you're giving a talk in India and you're doing the Bianchi case. <laughs> so these elliptic units were studied in great detail. Maybe even I don't know if I should use the word discovered, but many of the properties of them were just uh, written down by Ramachandra in a paper in the annals in the 50s and uh, you 60s. I don't remember the exact date. So you should <laughs> look at this uh, oh, maybe I a little bit. Uh, I thought about really Robert. Uh, Robert, you. I thought it was Robert. Yeah, so that's Robert, I think, was a bit later. But in France, they're called Robert units. <laughs> but maybe they <laughs> called Ramachandra Robert units at the very least. I, I, I think that Ziegel and Ramachandra did the unramified ones, and then Robert did the ramified ones. OK, OK. I, I think Ziegel and Ramachandra, usually the unramified, they call Ziegel Ramachandra, and then okay. the Robert are the ramified ones. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Is it in your book, Hude? Ah, I think I might have a reference in my book, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I knew the attribute to Ramachandra. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other questions for me? I had a very uh, basic uh, question regarding this Bianchi. So, this Bianchi, the the space that you introduced, it's a real threefold, right? Uh, yes, it's a threefold. Yeah. So, uh, in a way, if you were to talk about this. You know the analog of universal elliptic curves in your situation. I mean, so what does it? I mean, if you were to, uh, I mean, if I understand correctly, you're transporting the methods of Venkatesh and Sharifi, and uh, there was this mention of you know considering the universal elliptic curve, so that parameterizes some uh, you know the the usual modular data. So in this case, what what is the analog of that? In the Bianchi setting? The, the, the whole point is, uh, of course, you don't have, it's not a modularized space, so you don't have a universal elliptic curve, but you just have the CM elliptic curve. For instance, for QI, you have the elliptic curve C mod ZI, the lattice ZI. So mm -hmm. this is a CM elliptic curve, and, and, and you can consider the K2 of the, the square of this elliptic curve and, and do the same as, as Venkatesh and, and Sharifi do. And um, and then you, you specialize at some torsion point, n torsion point, and you should get something in the K2 of the ray class here. Um, so there is nothing universal. It's just a fixed elliptic curve. Any other questions or comments? Okay. If not, then let's thank Professor Emmanuel again uh, for thank this lovely talk. Okay. Thank you.